Flower Friends, my name is Tilbury Owe, and I am the owner and creative director of The Petal Effect. I am so excited to be a part of Mayesh Design Star Series, and I can't wait to take you on this journey of how to create a style shoot and not only make it beautiful, but also an experience intentionally crafting a story that evokes emotion, sparks conversation, and leaves a lasting impression. Remember, people will forget what you said and what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. So captivate their hearts through the power of storytelling and transform your styled shoot into a meaningful campaign. In this video, I'll be teaching you all the logistics that goes down in planning your shoot. In the next video, I will be creating a floral fascinator that we'll be using on set at the shoot. Now let's get started. Planning a style shoot can be so much fun, but it can be entirely overwhelming. In this video, I will give you my top tips in which I go about planning and executing my shoots. All right, so here we go. The five topics we'll be going over in this tutorial are your why, your mood board, gathering your team, production breakdown, and countdown to shoot day. So your first step is determining your why. Why are you doing this shoot? Are you trying to create more brand awareness, build community? What exactly are you doing this shoot for? The next thing you also want to talk about or think about is what are your goals with this shoot? Are you trying to generate more website traffic? Do you want people to engage more with you on social media? It is important you determine your why and your goals for this shoot before you get started because those will be the foundation of what you're actually doing, right? Which leads me to tip number one. Analyze the behavior of your audience already. What do they like to do? Do they like to go on your website more? Are they engaging with you more on social media? Are they sending you more emails? Whatever it is, you want to determine what that is and also determine where you would like to see it go. Do you want people to engage more with you on your social media? Do you want to send more emails out? Whatever that is, you need to figure out what the behaviors of your audience is and where you would like to go with it. All right, next up, your mood board. This is where the element of storytelling comes into play and you really get to transform your style shoot into a more meaningful and intentional campaign. Coming from a background of beauty and commercial modeling and creative directing my own shoots for over a decade now, I've learned over and over again the importance of not only producing a project that is pleasing to the eye, but also captivating to the hearts of your audience and leaving a lasting impression. The art of storytelling. It allows your audience to tap into their emotions and formulate an even deeper bond with what you're presenting to them. First, you wanna determine what do you want your audience to feel? What emotions do you wanna evoke? Then use the six storytelling elements to craft your narrative. Remember, every story has a plot, character, setting, message, conflict, and resolution. Which leads me to tip number two. Use things like holidays, social causes, or even personal experience to craft your story. What do you want people to feel? At the end of the day, you want something that's authentic to you, but also authentic to your brand and also authentic to your audience so they can feel something. After you're done with that, then you can go on Pinterest and start hitting away. That's my favorite thing to do. Use Pinterest for reference points for images, things you want to see on set. I use Pinterest a lot. And after I'm done with Pinterest, I head over to Canva where I create my color palette, my mood board, and just pretty much organize everything together. Every detail should act as a puzzle piece in sync and flowing together to tell your story. Next up, gathering your team. Oh my gosh. Now this step requires a lot of organizational skills. So it's important that you write things down. The first thing you're gonna to want to do is write down all the other team members that you will need to include on the shoot. 
Do you need a photographer, videographer, makeup artist, hairstylist, wardrobe, or an assistant? Prioritize who you will be needing, like truly needing for your shoot, or who you can book if your budget allows. Now, the next thing you're going to want to determine after that is what is your budget? What do you have in mind for creating your idea, right? Budget is so important because you can easily go over your budget. So you want to make sure that you are holding yourself accountable to what you said you will spend on the shoot. Which leads me to tip number three. Tap into your pool of resources to help in meeting your budget goals. I absolutely cannot stress this enough. Reaching out to people within your community that can lend a hand, that's been my saving grace personally. What family members can you off can offer you a discount? What friend can you maybe use their basement as your location? Can the model also do her own makeup? Utilize your resources and see where and how you can cut costs so you can stay within your budget. Production breakdown. Now in this section, you wanna make sure you are as organized as possible because this is where things may get really, really complicated. The first thing I like to do is sit down and break down what each team member is required to do on set that day, right? So for example, if you have a videographer on set, what shots do you need them to capture? Are they captured behind the scene shots, close-ups, far away shots? You want to sit down and write down what each team member is going to be doing the day of set. Now, this is to allow you an easy and smooth day and also making sure that everyone's on the same page. You want to go over these things with your team members before the day of the shoot, just so everyone's on the same page. Which leads me to tip number four. Create a schedule for the day of that is strategic and effective for everyone you've set out to accomplish that day. Don't just have everyone show up at the same time if it's not necessary. Really sit down and map out the flow of the day. How long do I have my location for? Which shots need to be captured first? Can I have the videographer come in before or after the photographer? What time do I want my model on set? How long does it take to put on my makeup and hair? These questions are vital to answer before shoot day to avoid wasting time and ultimately not getting the results you hoped for. Jot down how you want the day to flow. Also, get as specific as adding time blocks for each task you want to accomplish. This will help tremendously in keeping you on track and also allowing you to pivot if necessary. Of shoot. And finally, Countdown to the day of the shoot, right? Now, three days prior to the shoot day, I like to send out an email to my team members detailing what the location is, what time we're getting started, anything that may be necessary for anyone to know. You want to send an email out three days prior to your shoot, which also allows for, in case anyone needs to cancel, um, you have enough ample time to replace them or figure out a way to do it yourself. Two days before my shoot, I like to prep my supply kit and go over my to-do list. Depending on how elaborate my shoot is, this is also a great day to start prepping my flowers and mechanics. At the end of the day, make a master list of things you still have to do before the shoot. One day before the shoot, if you still feel the need to, check in with your team. Once, once it's like early in the morning, make sure everyone's on the same page. Also, you will want to complete your checklist by the end of the day. Be mindful of your time though, and make sure that you're finishing prepping mechanics, flowers, and creating any pieces ahead of time. Which leads me to my final tip number five. Create any wearables for your shoot one to two days prior to your shoot and store them in a hydration chamber system. I learned this method from floral extraordinaire, Susan McClary, and it has been a game changer for me. This is what you do when you're creating a hydration chamber. You get an airtight container, put damp paper towels in it, spray it with water, lay your wearables inside the container, add another layer or two of damp paper towels over it, spray it again, close your lid, and store it in a cool, dark place. Okay, now take a deep breath because I know that was a lot. That was a lot to think about. But what I want you to do is sit back, rewatch this video, pull out a pen and paper, and take some notes. 
Remember, my job here is to make this process as easy and smooth for you. So make sure to take advantage of it. I want to say a huge shout out to Mayesh and Mayesh Design Star for choosing me to do the tutorial. Make sure you're tuning in for my next video, which we will be creating a floral fascinator for our on-set style shoot. Stay tuned.